Well, good morning everybody and welcome to uh, planning meeting here, part one. Which we've only got one item on this this morning now. Um, before we start, um, there's um, spare minutes and uh, papers at the back of the room. If you've got any. Uh, some house uh, rules and guidance. Uh, the toilets uh, um, are on the ground floor and there is a toilet for people with dis disabilities on the floor, just around the corner on the right here. Big machines outside, you've probably seen. There's no fire alarms planned today, so in the event of an um, alarm going off, please uh, follow instructions from our council staff, which will guide you down the stairs out onto Pease Hill. That's the point. Uh, I can remind everyone to um, silence their, their phones and um, when using the microphone, if you can get reasonably close to it so we can hear you. And if anyone at the back can't hear, uh, please put your hand up or alert so we can do something about it. Uh, so, um, I'll go to the genders now. Uh, apologies. Um, I know we've got one from Councillor Corfrock. That, that's it. The yeah, only other apology will be from me that I will have to leave uh, for part of the second. Uh, 12.30. Declarations of interest. Well, you can do that probably this afternoon. If it counts as smart, this yeah, afternoon. Yeah. This afternoon, you can yeah. um, declare that then, it would probably be better. But if you think of anything in, in, for this, this application, just let us know. Uh, have we got minutes of this now, haven't we? No, no minutes to sign. So um, then we go um, straight to the first item. Um, Item five from council. So item six. Um, and before we start uh, start with the public uh, speakers, we've got three I think for um, objections. Um, Mr. Cohane, Cohane, uh, Mr. Alias, and Mr. Taylor. Um, you have a minute, it's three minutes, or a minute each, and we agreed that our officer here will ring the bell when your first minute's up and then the second minute. If you'd like to come to the, get yourself ready to come to the table. Okay. And also we've got um, Mr. Sutton, the agent, if you'd like to come to the table. Uh, you have three minutes to speak. <laughs> but before we get to that, we'll have an officer, the case officer. Association properties that were arranged around two separate cul de sacs and next to a footpath and cycling to Warren Road. The site is joined by two story dwellings in Eastfield, Warren Road, Chesterfield Road, Shirley Road, the Net Greens, and also by Chesterton Primary School. The application proposes to demolish the houses and to erect 50 new dwellings on the site, all of which would be affordable. This is phases one and two of proposals, 500 houses to redevelop these fields. Phase three is the subject of a separate application um, that is currently scheduled to be determined under delegated powers, and that proposes to erect 12 houses in place of the existing eight. The development consists of a range of dwelling types, including two storey houses, bungalows, and flats and associated cycling bin stores, parking, landscape and open space. These would be accessed by a single cul-de-sac and the highway would be reconfigured near to the link to Warren Road. Um, objections were originally received from the urban sign and landscape officers as well as from a number of local residents, notably those at 22 and 24 Evergreens. Um, this has resulted in the scheme being amended essentially to remove parking courts that were previously proposed in the centre and corners of the site, with these now being replaced with on-block parking and flats over garages. 
Most of the consultees feel the scheme was amended as acceptable so further <coughs> conditions. There are, however, some outstanding consultee objections. Um, the affordable housing team <coughs> has raised some concern that the mix of drains proposed doesn't comply with the affordable housing SPD. Um, this is addressed in the report um, <coughs> where I said that I feel these, as this is for 100% affordable housing, I feel the standards can only reasonably be applied to the centre of the scheme rather than the entire development. Um, the Housing Association has also clarified that the proposed housing mix has been designed to enable existing residents to relocate to the new properties, taking account of their changing needs. Um, and on this basis, I feel the proposal is acceptable on these grounds. The cycling and walking officer has also raised concerns about the application um, and feels that the cycling pedestrian limit for the Warren Road should be widened to three and a half metres. Um, and a number of local residents and users of this link have also raised similar concerns. Um, which have been assessed in the report. Um, in summary, I feel that the scale of the proposed development, which is 24 additional drones on this site um, and four in phase three, um, is not significant enough to justify improvements to this route. Um, revised highways layout has been drawn up um, following significant pre application discussions with the Highways Authority, um, who particularly wanted to secure secure a modification to the existing layout here to try and slow vehicle speeds down um, and they have expressed their support for the scheme that's been submitted. There has also been an objection to the scheme on the basis that there's no footpath link to the adjacent primary school. Um, now the applicant's agent has clarified that the team has overgrown and hasn't been used for some time, um, and also that the school would not wish to see it um, reopened and preferring to attain a single access point to the front. Um, now providing this link would mean that the number of dwellings would have to be reduced, um, which um, a viability report has been submitted separately to the application. Um, arguing that this would make the scheme unviable if needed to reduce the number of properties. Um, I would also say, and I'll show a map of this later, that the school is located just 0. 0.3 miles and 6 minutes walk from the site, um, going along Midfield and then along Ashfield Road and Green End Road. So, given that it's close anyway, it can be accessed via footpaths and safely. I don't feel that we can justify the provision of the as part of this scheme. The site is surrounded by dwellings and a number of residents have objected to the proposal. Um, on the whole, the new houses have been designed with 9 to 10 metre deep grey gardens. Um, plots and short gardens are either occupied by bungalows or look towards the bottom of neighbouring gardens. So I'm happy this wouldn't give rise to overlooking or overshadowing issues. Um, the main concerns about the immunity impacts have been raised by 7 and 8 Shirley Road, 22 and 24 Evergreens, and 53 Chesterfield Road. Um, the properties in Evergreens are beyond the southern corner of the site. Um, these residents raised objections to the original scheme, which proposed a parking court directly next to their properties, um, and have confirmed that the amended plans have largely resolved their concerns. Um, they do have outstanding concerns that the amendment has resulted in the building coming closer to their boundaries. Um, I just wanted the assurance that that wouldn't give rise to a significant overbearing issue. Um, and they've also raised some concern about balcony at the front of this plot and the potential for overlooking. I think the properties are far enough away from those in the greens to avoid any um, significant loss of light or outlook. So I do think the balcony has the potential to look directly into their gardens, so I have recommended a condition to require the side of that balcony to be fitted with a solid screen. Um, number 8, Shirley Grove, has also raised concerns um, on a number of grounds, namely overlooking, overbearing, loss of light, and noise disturbance. And the dwellings on this eastern part of the site would be closer than the existing houses, but they would still be 19 to 20 metres away from the rear of neighbouring houses, 
And this instance, I feel is sufficient to prevent a significantly harmful overlooking or overshadowing impact, although I do accept the impact would be greater than it exists at present. Um, the owner of number seven, Shirley Grove, um, requested a change to the internal layout to minimise the perception of being overlooked, and the amended plan has been submitted that um, addresses this request. Number 53, Chester, Chesterfield Road, which lies beyond the uh, northeastern boundary of the site, um, has raised concerns regarding the revised layout, uh, which results in lots 14 to 16 in the flat above the garage coming close to their property. Um, this doesn't give rise to any harmful risk or overlooking issues. Um, but in response to their concerns, the agent has amended the plan to reposition the bin stalls in the rear gardens and also to erect a 1.8 metre high wall along the boundary between the plots 14 to 16 um, and where the property lies on number 53 in order to provide a greater sense of security and privacy to, to these neighbours. Um, the report notes that a separate confidential viability report has been submitted with the application, um, arguing that any reduction in the number of dwellings or requirement for infrastructure contribution would make the scheme unviable um, and result in the need to substitute market dwellings for affordable ones. Now, in terms of assessing infrastructure contributions, there are two areas of open space nearby where contributions could potentially be directed. These are on Scotland Road and Greenland Road. Um, the former is already having a scheme of improvements carried out, um, and the latter, according to a recent study carried out, is um, quite well provided for. Um, and I think taking those factors into account, the viability information provided by the agent, and also the fact that the proposal does um, include an area of open space that could be used by existing and proposed residents. Um, my recommendation is that we proceed without requiring any contributions in this instance. So the recommendation is to approve, subject to the section 106 agreement firstly being indicated to secure affordable housing across the site um, and to the conditions that have been set out in the report and the amendment sheet. I'm waiting for the Nature Conservation Officer to provide uh, detailed wording of an ecological condition. Um, the agent has also yesterday forwarded to me a heavy vehicle tracking plan that has been recommended by the waste team. And I've therefore asked for delegated powers to resolve these issues and to apply any recommended conditions um, that are recommended by those officers. And I'll just run you through the plans. Shows the... So the site here has been outlined in red, um, and this shows the existing arrangement of houses around the two cul de sacs, um, etched in blue on the opposite side of this field is um, the site that's subject to phase three application. And you can see that the, the site is surrounded by houses. Um, in the south, next to the southeast corner is Chesterton Primary School. This shows the proposed layout. Now, this is the very latest amendment and does differ very slightly from the plans that were included in the drawing pack. Um, you can see the, the, or the main access coming in. Um, off East Field and near to the link through to Warren Road, which is proposed to be retained as part of this application. Um, it then ends in a single cul de sac um, where there is an area of public open space at the end and a further footpath and cycle link provided onto East Field towards the southern end of the site. Um, the, the amendments included in this scheme are the addition of this small section of wall next to number 53 Chesterfield um, and also a small reconfiguration to the garden area of plots 43 and 44 to address some minor outstanding concerns of the urban sign officer. Um, I'll just 
run through the plots. This is going back to the plan, essentially going from bottom left, and then as you go around the cold sand. Um, so the first three plots are bungalows, um, and then on the other side of the footpath link through to Warren Road are two-storey houses. Um, and then the majority of the remainder of the houses are two-storey and consist of a mixture of brick or brick and render finishes. So this shows the, the elevations near to number 53 Chesterfield and also the properties in 7 and 8 Shirley Grove. Um, with that impact, plots 20 to 26 also above the, the garden areas of properties in Shirley Grove. And this shows how they sort of step down to the carports between the dwellings. Again, this is just coming round to, this includes plots 31 and 32, which are um, the residents of Evergreens raised some concerns about in the Marathi I mentioned earlier. Um, then this is coming round sort of the right hand side of the site as we were, as we were looking at it. And then lastly, I just want to show you that this is an extract from Google Maps showing the walking route to the school and picking up on the issue of the lack of a footpath link through from the site itself. This is taking the starting point of number 46 Eastfield, which is next to the link through to Warren Road, um, and shows the walking route uh, going down Eastfield then Ashfield Road, then on to Green End Road, and up into the primary school as being a 0.3 mile route taking six minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the three objectives, I don't know which order you want to go, and I'll leave it up to you. Hi, uh, my name is Andrew, so I'm um, the uh, number eight Shirley Grove. Um, my biggest concern is the um, number of plots which are going to be abutting eight Shirley Grove. Um, so the six plots directly 19 to 24. Uh, these are two storey buildings. Shirley Grove, if you look over, looking the entire um, length of the garden, which is around 52 metres. Um, so it kind of translates into 12 top storey windows overlooking the um, the length of the property and uh, essentially being in the garden it's going to be like being in a fishbowl and being and be like being under constant surveillance. So um, I know um, some, some changes have been made on similar concerns that number seven Shirley Grove had on the layout of the, uh, the, the top floor change and something similar could be done with these properties here so that the bathrooms are facing the back and having obscured glass in there so the perception of being overlooked is, is reduced with these top story windows and looking in the garden. Um, the other concern is this is effectively a, a continuous structure of build um, with the carports in between and the carports are being for around I'm Richard Taylor of Milton Road. Uh, the council has got some very strong policies for um, preserving and enhancing cycling and walking routes in the city. I come today to urge you to follow these policies when you make um, the decision. What we've currently got on the connection between Eastfield and Warren Road is a clearly marked, signed, shared use cycle and pedestrian footway. Um, I'm not convinced that um, the plans that are before you will preserve that and they certainly won't enhance it. Um, what is proposed includes two 90 degree corners. You've heard um, from your officer that um, they think that this will slow traffic, including um, cyclists. I don't think that is um, appropriate. I think there is an opportunity to here to have a straight and safe uh, cycle route um, through from Warren Road to Downey's Field, connecting Milton Road and Science Park with, um, for example, the um, low traffic cycle routes um, along Riverside. I would be making these points even if this was a single plot. I don't think the comments about this not being large enough developments to um, warrant improving cycle routes. Sorry, the, the bell doesn't mean that they've got to stop talking, as the previous speaker. Oh, the bell is just an indication of your time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had word speakers told that. Yeah, I'd say got three minutes between them. I, just did a, I, I had a word of speakers for this. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kevin Gavay and I'm the occupier of 53 Chesterfield Road. Um, a lot of our concerns have been addressed by the Planning Council, for which I thank you. Um, we would just really appreciate a lot more detail on both the wall and the fencing, which is going to surround our property. Arguably, our property is the closest to this 
new footpath and the buildings themselves. Um, when we brought the house, it was a, we brought the house in a cul-de-sac, and you could really argue now it is now a more cul-de-sac with a public right of way going directly behind our bathroom, children's room, and kitchen. So we really would urge you to give some real detail on the wall and the fencing down the side of our house. And the cycling campaign, the local county councillor and many residents and your own cycling walking officer have expressed concern about the impact on cycle routes. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we have the... Mr. Sutton. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> 100 Houses Society is a charitable housing association with just over 1,000 properties under their ownership and management in Cambridge and the surrounding area. As well as working with local authorities, parish councils, developers, landowners, funders and individuals, the society has a close working relationship with our senior homes, who are their development arm and who would be responsible for delivering the proposed new affordable homes in Eastfield. <coughs> These proposals have been developed over the last two years and will present an opportunity to secure a significant number of affordable rented dwellings in the city probably the last, given the government's new focus on first-time buyer housing. The applicants have held several pre-application meetings with officers, and their input and advice has informed and shaped the scheme you see before you today. The most recent minor revisions to the proposals, as explained by the planning officer, have sought to address neighbours' concerns about loss of amenity, and all other technical requirements have now been met, although obviously I do accept the comments about the, the cycle footpath. Um, which has been preserved and is a three metre footpath as shown on the plans. As you're aware, the existing housing is, um, a number of those houses are in a poor state of repair. They're currently vacant. They have very large gardens and um, the benefits of this scheme are, are quite enormous. Um, a number of the existing residents will be relocated and the funding is, is very tight, both in terms of the grant and the ability to rehouse local residents, and also provide some shared equity housing, which is helping to cross subsidise the whole scheme. So viability is, is a key issue, as explained in the officer's report. Um, I just hope that you can um, see fit to support the officer's recommendation and approve the proposals. Thank you. Thank you. There's, there's only um, one point I feel I need to come back on in terms of the issues that have been raised because I think um, everything has already been assessed in the, in the report and in my presentation today. But it's just really in terms of the comment made by number 53 Chesterfield Road um, in terms of the details of the boundary is that there is a recommended condition um, requiring details of all boundary treatments um, to be provided before development starts um, and for those to be erected um, and retained on site thereafter. So um, through that condition we would be looking to um, get full details of what's proposed to all boundaries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I've got two members. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm uh, particularly concerned about the questions of permeability for uh, walkers and buses. Uh, I think we have um, not pleased with um, the changes that's being made. I'd like to see a map um, showing the present, future, and past ones. Uh, I'd like to see this so called overgrown path um, and any other aspects of the pedestrian and cycle movement in, in this area, please. back to the site location plan here. Um, the, the existing linkages are shown um, 
firstly through to Warren Road, which is towards the, the left hand side of the um I'll see if I can point to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so there's the link through to Warren Road here, which is the footpath and cycle link. This is where the proposal involves the reconfiguration of the highway layout. Um, <coughs> this shows the, the link through to the back of the primary school. Uh, yeah. And then the, the map that I showed you um, from Google Maps showing the, the sort of alternative route to the primary school. So it continues from the site. So this is the Warren Road link. So it continues down Eastfield and Ashfield Road. Um, along Green End Road and then up into the into the primary school grounds in the front rather than back of the building. Um, and there's a footpath the whole way through here, so I'm satisfied that there is um, a safe means of pedestrian access to the school um, and it's not a long distance away either, it's very much walkable distance. I'm not sure I agree with, with, with that analysis because um, Green End Road is a very busy road for a start. Um, and it seems to me the, the distance around three sides of the square is, 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 is really substantial. Um, the school's objection to having two potential accesses seems to me um, not um, felt by other um, schools. Milton Road Primary School has, has a double access and I think other other schools with similar double access. So I, I don't think the school's um, objection should be the overriding factor. I think people's convenience and permeability is, I think, extremely important. <coughs> and we should be making efforts. And I fully support the, the walking and cycling officers' objections to, to, to the proposed layout. It seems to be what you've got there falls down on a number of counts. I've got three questions, Chair. Um, first of all, what is the status of the SPD on affordable housing? Because it's, uh, there's no question that it's uh, being cast aside in, in terms of the bed mix and so on that is normally required for affordable housing. So I just want to know, uh, I'd just like a restatement of why we have an SPD. And if perhaps in explaining that, it would be good to hear that account has been taken of the housing needs of those on the, uh, on the register. So I, you know, I'd like to think that the SPD is not some sort of remote document that has come from outer space. It is a, a document that addresses itself very specifically to the needs of those who find it very, very hard to uh, occupy normal, normal accommodation. So and the second thing is, um, I, I'm not quite clear as to whether the present housing on the site is occupied or not. A great deal has been made of the bed mix which is being proposed being a response to the needs of the existing residents, which is, I think, a specious argument and one that we shouldn't accept on the planning committee because we don't make reference to present occupants and their needs as being a, a, an object of planning policy. We're, we're, we're thinking about buildings and general need and future need uh, rather than the uh, giving special consideration to present present, uh, present residents. So I'd like to know a bit more about how many of the dwellings are, are currently occupied. And I have to say that uh, I think Richard Taylor's uh, intervention is a, is a useful one because, uh, as I see it, the mix of cycling, of cyclists and pedestrians, particularly children, going to and from school, and presumably some of them being unaccompanied, 
with two abrupt 90% corners seems to me to be not a very sensible, safe solution to the mix of cyclists and pedestrians. I'd, I'd like further comment on that. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, first on the general what Councillor Hitkins can say, I, I think um, the public houses need to be commended for seeking to, um, I'm going to say revamp, that's not really quite the right word, um, to um, improve their estate in the present political climate of, with what's happening with, with, with the social housing. And um, I very much welcome uh, the increase in, so in houses of social rent that's being uh, proposed. Um, I, I note Councillor Hitchkin's comments on the SPD, but I think that um, where you've got a present landlord who is, at, um, who is attempting to both uh, rebuild an estate, get more on it, and look after their tenants, that sounds to me, it may or may not be good in planning terms, but it does sound to me to be good in overall terms for the city. Uh, so uh, that was my first thought. The second thing I wanted to do was to um, pick up on what Councillor Tulliford was saying about the path to the school. I also find it um, strange that the school finds it impossible to deal with two entries. Um, I also know a school which has got two entries. And presumably, uh, the school would be uh, fully entitled to have a gate where the path enters their premises, which could be shut when, when certainly overnight, um, and possibly in part during the day when once children have come, then shut the gate and then open it for them to go. Uh, it does seem to me to be perfectly, pro perfectly possible to um, have children off those main roads, and I'm with Gautam Tunnicliffe on saying that, you know, very small children just learning to cycle along a path, sharing, probably sharing the pathway with other children going to school is not really something we should be promoting. And to have a path, even if it is a mixed path for cyclists and pedestrians, which at least isn't complicated with motorised traffic, does sound to me to be the better option. And as I said, I think the school could um, find ways of controlling un um, unless undesirable access um, during the times, well, certainly overnight and possibly during the day, should they feel so necessary. And if it doesn't work, then the, the game they could just close it. I know a new school being built around there and had one access. I think for security reasons, if you look at what's been happening there, over the last brand new school being built. I know the schools only like to have one access for security reasons. I know, but there are plenty that have two. Yes, there are other schools which were built for security. Yes, so, I, I just wonder how far we've, we've gone with this security thing, whether we don't sometimes go over the top. Um, and there are ways of doing it which keeps the security, but also keeps the convenience, and also keeps the possibility of, of young children getting into the habit of cycling to school um, safely. And, and if they don't manage, if they don't start young, they won't do it at all. We, we, was, we have been listening to what the schools want on this place. Councillor Hart. Um, well, drawing my attention to the Council 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 and um, I, can, I can respect Chesterton Common School's um, viewpoint that having a, 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 an entrance uh, on a remote uh, area of the school, as in the other side of the um, playing fields, might cause an issue. Because, of course, they, they, okay, I take the point that it could be locked at night, but of course, uh, with, with the, the world that we live in, Unfortunately, um, the way the way the world is today, schools have to be very careful with security, and all all gates are locked, and secure uh, fencing um, is around the schools. Uh, once the children arrive at school, and until until they, they and, and they go home in the evening, the children are not allowed out at lunch times unless they are 
uh, escorted, uh, they're, they're picked up by a recognised parent. That's what we live in. Sad world, it is. But, so I can fully respect why Cheston Primary School um, would be reluctant to, um, uh, you know, to having that access there. And the other, another, another point is, unfortunately, person they, they did uh, employ somebody to man, man the gate and, and do the security. What happens next is um, other parents who um, try to take their children to school by car would then see this as another option for getting that much an inch closer to the school um, to drop the children off. And then very, very, very soon Eastfield will be become have a, 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 you know a, will become this sort of problem that across perhaps across the city where there's a congestion of cars at certain, certain times in the morning and certain times at night because you know because that's unfortunately that's the way of the world. Parents don't feel um, don't feel it's a safe environment children to walk to school on their own anymore. And you know, and that's where we are. So I fully respect Jessica Francois' viewpoint of the um, Shrigate. Thank you, John. I'm glad you picked the point up about the car because we've got problems in other areas where we have uh, areas of schools where an estate people will park on this on the, this, this estate could be a car park to drop the kids off at school. Council plan for that. Just to start from a, um, a general point, I echo Councillor Smart's um, uh, initial comments about um, this scheme being obviously 100% affordable housing in the present uh, political climate. That's uh, uh, to be commended, and, and obviously in our housing uh, policies within the local plan, that's to be um, given a lot of weight and a lot of uh, um, uh, merit uh, accordingly. Uh, in terms of the design, uh, clearly. Everybody has a view on uh, this design and other designs, and we all think one or two things could be done a little bit better, could be done differently, and that is clearly um, uh, often uh, the subject of discussion at, the, at this committee. But we have to judge what's here in front of us uh, now with the evidence behind it from the report and the public file documents. In terms of um, the, the general design, yes, um, uh, there is a uh, issue in terms of the uh, balance of the mix of the, uh, the housing, but the report indicates that actually we can only apply that SPD to the 40% that we would normally require rather than the full 100%. That's a, you know, uh, an interesting sort of uh, slant, but clearly, strictly speaking, yes, we can only apply that on the 40% that we would have uh, uh, demanded from uh, the scheme. They have clearly tried to accommodate those who, those tenants who wish to return to um, Eastfields, and they have been accommodated in terms of their requirements um, accordingly. Clearly there's a up, big uplift in the number of housing units which again is to commend and that's, that's in, my, in my opinion again to be given uh, a great deal of uh, weight in the present um, uh, policy sort of context. In terms of some of the issues that have been raised, uh, clearly um, the, the overgrown path at the rear uh, sorry, to the rear of the school is not accepted by the school as an access. Therefore, you could, in theory, design a scheme that has a, uh, a pathway to the rear of the school, but actually if the school aren't going to use it, then you're wasting your time and money, uh, and actually you're, you're actually uh, reducing the footprint of the housing that's in that uh, gap uh, as part of this design. So I would suggest uh, that's not exactly the, uh, um, the best use of this um, uh, uh, land. Uh, Again, as a school governor, I know full well there are long discussions at school governors these days about safeguarding and, uh, and security, and, and I respect the fact that the school said, and they have said, um, that they don't wish to entertain a rear access. And we're not talking about dual access, we're talking about a rear access, which is a bit different in terms of how you secure uh, a school site. Um, and clearly, um, uh, we have to accept uh, that view. Yes, it may be a current view, but my guess is, you know, that's. Um, uh, prevalent view and um, uh, needs to be um, uh, respected. So, uh, since it's overgrown at the moment and probably hardly ever used because you can't get into the school from it, um, I don't see that as a, uh, a major uh, uh, problem. In terms of um, the, the cycle link or pedestrian stroke cycle link uh, on one road, clearly uh, there's a, a change in the configuration of how this relates to this development. Um, Yes, in an ideal world, in an ideal design, you'd have a straight through uh, cycle and uh, uh, footpath link through. 
Uh, this does have a, uh, uh, a turn uh, along it. Um, that's, again, that's not unknown within the city. We have lots of uh, routes that then suddenly turn and, and, and kink and, and, and whatever. Yes, it's not ideal for a cyclist, but actually, in terms of design, it's, it's done to actually make that uh, entrance point to the development and the, uh, the main part of the development uh, to boot uh, into, a, you know, into a better, safer environment for all. Uh, concerned, uh, and I think I again respect that uh, in terms of the design uh, treatment. Uh, yes, you may slow down a few cyclists, but actually, that's because there's lots of other conflicts of, uh, of movements uh, at that point, so that's to be um, uh, accepted. Um, uh, and in terms, in terms of, uh, um, uh, I think the overall uh, design. Um, uh, if if I see uh, um, the drawings are accurate, the, if the graphics are accurate. Uh, yes, I think it's effective use of this uh, site, and I say uh, to me, I'll give uh, far greater weight to the actual uplifting numbers of uh, affordable housing, uh, and actually um, a far better use of this town, which actually, from the original uh, uh, slide that um, Case also put up, showed how poor the use this land was originally. Thank you. Just to return to this question, we've got to Milton Road Primary School is a very recent. 10 years old, so we're, we're talking about a, a contemporary building. It has a, a dual access, and the rear access, and it is a rear access, is closed once the children are in school and it's not opened again until they come out to go, to go home. So um, I don't think the points of council are making are particularly germane to this question. It's perfectly possible to have two accesses which are completely safe and secure, and I think the advantages would greatly outweigh the disadvantages to have that easy access rather than having to go around three parts of the square, and particularly along a, a very busy main road. Could I ask a question? If the school doesn't want the access, is that in planning terms we can't do nothing about that, can we? I think I think we could, but we we would need to take into account the likelihood of, of that being used um, and whether it's reasonable to to require that. As a yeah, school government experience, yes, this this design could have included a pathway to the rear of the school. If the school decided that they don't wish to actually entertain the use of a rear access onto the school premises, then that's up to them. You can't do anything like that. Thanks for I appreciate the views of Kazir Smart and Tim uh, But I have a, a different question. Um, I, on the condition 24 on page 55, this should, be, should this application be approved? You said it's, uh, there is a choice of program of measures to new magistrate available on that on the side during uh, construction and demolition. Can you, can you also elaborate what kind of measures do you do? Because we're currently facing the residents complaining in Mobile Road, they're coming in dust and people from the neighbors, as well as in Master Road. So I'm not quite sure what are the kind of rules you put in place to stop. And then the contractors are not really very willing to, to cooperate with the neighbors. They're not interested. <coughs> Through you, Chair, the sort of measures would be something like making sure there's damping down so there's somebody with the hose pipe in the middle of the weather, making sure the dust stays in sight, um, something like um, wheel washing to make sure that the night and day breeze isn't taken up onto the road, making sure that. Um, when demolition is taking place, that the vehicles that are removing anything from the site have covers over them. So those sort of practical mm -hmm. measures. But it'd be down to the contractor to bring that information forward at a later date. And if they don't, you say you not listen to, if they don't follow these, do we have the power to say, look, you should have followed these rules? Yes, we would do because as part of uh, there'd be an approval of a planning condition. If they then didn't um, deal with that planning condition 
uh, requirements, then we'd have enforcement files that we can implement. But before we did that, we'd probably send somebody like Nick Mill and we can sort of contract to stay on our site to have other work. But I wouldn't anticipate there being an issue, bearing in mind who the developers are. Mr. Smart. Sorry to remark on it, but that's a kind of thing. I think we've all been talking about things at one time or another. Um, if at this point we take out that part, it can never be put back in, or un unlikely to be able to be put back in, should the school decide that traffic is more dangerous to children than uh, somebody coming in through the rear entrance whom they don't want. Um, and the present, the balance of opinion, obviously, in the school at the moment, is that that danger is greater than the traffic. I could see, I can easily foresee, of course, uh, the that balance of, um, of risk <coughs> being weighted differently in the future. Therefore, I think we ought to have the path there, even if it is not going to be used at the moment. Because, as I said, um, the balance of risk for children between strangers and traffic is not quite as straightforward as sometimes the headlines might suggest. I'll just go to how about the traffic going that state of the children playing in the... It, it, we're talking about the traffic uh, going there, and I, I agree that um, parents taking children to school, particularly if it's over a short distance, is a distinct hazard for school children. <coughs> but one of the factors that prevents that or, or goes against that is providing safe routes for walking and cycling, which are short. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, the, the constant pressure of the, of the school and particularly the other parents, the PTA, etc., on parents being responsible if they must take their children to school and actually considering whether they really must is really the only factor that can be dealt with there. But it is all part of the risk, which I accept that the school has to balance out. The risk from traffic, including parents bringing the children to school, but also the risk of the traffic on a main road, as against the, the risk of undesirables getting into the school, which I would suggest is actually much less. But, but it is a balance that the parents, that the school has to, has to but if we take the path out, it's not a judgment that they can make. We're taking their choice away from them. What I suggest is undesirable. Well, in response to that, I'd just say that the, the overall recommendation on this is very much a, a balanced one. Um, if, you know, we have um, received evidence from the applicant's agent that um, the school would not wish this route to be used, it's overgrown, it hasn't been used for some time. So if we were to insist on this being provided or space being set aside to provide this in the future, um, that would mean a number of dwellings would have to be reduced to accommodate it, which would, according to the viability information we see, affect the viability of the, of the scheme um, and result in the need to um, possibly provide some market housing in order to improve the, the cross subsidies. So, really taking a very sort of balanced view um, and the need to, to secure additional affordable housing and the fact that this proposal is looking to make much better use of the site than exists at present, um, the recommendation is to approve without that link being provided. Um, yeah, in response to that, I can't believe that a two and a half metre path is going to um, so impair the viability of this scheme. It just seems to be completely out, out of um, proportion. Um, I think a any uh, designer could um, create that necessary space without losing um, the viability of, of the scheme. 
Um, the reason that the park is overgrown, one we'll needs to know the history of that school. The, there was a previous school on that site which closed down some years ago, and the site was vacant for at least two years, and then, then they decided to reopen it because of a growing plant. So it's not surprising the park is overgrown. Um, the, the pool had ceased to exist, and, and, and nobody was um, going that way at, anyway. So I think we'll have to be very careful to, to, to keep to the facts and not to interpret um, as we seem to be doing. There is a very strong case for making short cycling and walking paths which are far from motorised vehicles for primary school children particularly. Um, and I think it's something that we should just cast aside. At the very least, as Councillor Smart says, leave the possibility open for the future and ask the governors and, and head teacher of Cheston Primary School to go to Milton Road and talk to their opposite numbers there and see how it can work perfectly well, perfectly safely. It's not, it should not be an issue. I think they have, they have already talked, but Councillor Glenn, can I think? Yeah, I just echo Councillor Smart's um, point that it's fairly, if you believe that to be the case, then you'll have to vote to refuse this scheme because this scheme uh, essentially designed to close it off. We understand that and we understand the reasons why. On that note, then I think we're Councillor Chair. I asked three questions. None of them has been answered. I, I, I would enjoy the courtesy of an answer to my question. Status of the SP and what account it took of the housing needs of those on the register. And can I please ask also how many of the dwellings presently are occupied and unoccupied? Okay, the, the information that I have is that the affordable housing SPD um, dates from 2008 and is intended as. Um, Sort of advice and advisory background to the to the relevant planning policy. Um, I haven't assessed this against the housing needs register. The, the application has made it clear that these dwellings are intended to serve the needs of existing occupiers that are looking to be rehoused in the new dwellings, um, and also um, those on the. Um, register of 100 Houses Housing Association. So I am satisfied that there is a need for the dwellings that are proposed within this application, even though the mix isn't strictly in accordance with the, with the SPD. Um, my understanding, but I can't say with any certainty, but my understanding is that the, the housing on the site is presently occupied, um, but I couldn't say if if any are vacant. Um, and then the, the third question, um, I think on the mixture of cyclists and pedestrians going to and from the, the school, I think we, we sort of talked about further since the original question. is one of approval subject to section 106 being firstly being completed and the conditions set out in the report. Um, the amendment sheet does include an additional condition that has been recommended by the tree officer um, which is to require an agricultural method statement and tree protection plan um, which will show how the trees that are to be retained would be protected during the course of development. Um, so the amendment sheet notes that down as an additional condition 26. Um, in my summary earlier on this morning, I also mentioned two 
like in additional conditions, firstly the nature conservation officer has indicated um, that an ecological condition will be required and I'm currently waiting for the detailed wording of that to be provided. Um, and do also need to um, liaise with the waste team regarding the tracking diagram that was provided yesterday by the agent. Um, so I'm looking to delegate the authority to apply any conditions that may be required by the waste team in response to that.